Hi, hello, this is Denise. Good to see you again, or at least for you to see me again, or to see the knitting again. And so I'm back, and since it's winter time, I want to go ahead and do a fingerless glove project. This one is going to be really simple and quick. And instead of knitting in the round, I'm going to knit flat, and they're called muffetees. And this is a 1838 Victorian pattern. And you're just going to knit in flat. And then you're going to knit three, purl three, and continue that pattern until you get the width to wrap around from one side of the wrist to the other. And so basically, um, the pattern calls for uh, a sport weight yarn, and I'm going to use a worsted weight yarn, and you cast on, if you're using a sport weight, they say to cast on 40, I think it was 44. Uh, since I'm going to use a worsted weight, I'm going to cast on 32, and the cast on is actually the length you want the glove to be. So the first pair I made, when I cast on 32, it came from the top of my fingers, or maybe a little bit above the top of the fingers, down to about here on my wrist. And that was long enough. If you want longer gloves, cast on more. If you have thinner yarn, cast on more. So here I am, I have a worsted weight, which I think is a number three, might be a number four. I'm so used to calling the worsted, I can't remember what the numbers are. And I'm going to cast on uh, 32. And actually, maybe I'll do a little more. So for my cast on, I'm just doing the looped cast on. I'm not going. I'm not doing the long tail. I'm just going to loop them on. And the first just counts as one, so two. And basically, if you remember from last time, you have the yarn around your index finger, and you're just turning it away from you, sliding the loop on. So cast on four, and you can hear all the dogs around. Uh, Yes, Dylan. Dylan wants something. So I might have to pause and go and take him out for party or whatever he thinks he wants. Or he wants the cat. That's probably what he really wants. Six, eight, ten. And just keep casting on until you get to 32. And if you remember that when um, when you cast on this method, it's not making a row of knit like um, the other, the long tail cast on wood. So when you go to knit, you have to be careful about sliding these guys off. And just count them again, 16, 17. Okay, so now I have 32 and I have Jewel. There's Jewel in my lap. She's trying to climb up. Hi, Jewel. Okay, Jewel is my six month old. She's a Chihuahua Jack Russell Terrier mix. And I got her from my neighbor. And uh, he had some puppies, and I, um, it was an oops litter. And I told him, you know, I can help them find help you find homes for them. And when I saw this little one, I just I couldn't resist her. So here she is. She's definitely a, a change from the German Shepherds. Okay, so now for the first three rows, you're knitting, and then you're just purling, and this is all happening garter stitch. So we're just turning the work. Okay, remember to watch those stitches. They don't pop off. And I don't even worry about tightening them. Hmm. Got to get it through the loop. I'm just working. Oh, I'm sorry. These are number six size needles. 
use whatever needles are appropriate to your yarn. I found that I, on the first pair, I really did like the six. Okay, so. I'm gonna try to keep that thumb out of the way, but it's the thumb that's keeping the stitches from sliding off. We want a refresher of the knit stitch through the loop. Or if you're knitting uh, uh, continental like I am. Of course, it's a little different if you're knitting the other way. Going around. Oh, that one's a little tricky there. And I'm such a tight knitter. I hate when I lose a loop like that. I'm gonna go back and get that. Now I lost another one. Uh -huh. I am such a tight knitter. But there we go, we're all back to normal here. Okay, so okay, so I think you pretty much got the idea right now. So you knit three, purl three, knit three, or purl three, and I mean knit three whole rows. When I say knit three, knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three. Okay. All right, now I'll come back with a second segment when I've gotten a couple rows of the knit three, purl three, so you can look at it. Then we'll go from there. Okay, see you soon. Okay, now, so here we go, after you've knit, it up as far as you want it. Uh, you're just going to fold it over. Make sure it meets where you want it to meet. That's good. Fold it. Decide which side is going to be your inside and your outside. I wanted this to be my outside with the pearl, more pearl stitches. And so this will be, well, I'm going to fold it in and I'm going to seam it up. So um, leave a tail. I should have left a longer tail, but I didn't. So leave yourself a nice tail. And I just, I'm going to use, I want to say this is a whip stitch. Go ahead, get a yarn needle. This can be done with a crochet hook if you don't have a yarn needle. Meet your ends together. I like to meet the pattern together at the end. Oh, I'm sorry. At the at the end of my um, mitt for this one, I did the fan and feather. So the fan and feather requires 36 stitches. So for this particular glove, I made it for my niece, and I only put 28, so I had to increase. But uh, in this case, just go ahead and you know don't worry about the little fancy fan or feather. If you like, I can show you how to do that in another video because I got to make another pair for my other niece. And so we're just going to, you had left your tail up here, or if you didn't, just put some yarn on the needle. And we're just going to go through every loop. And if you want, you can thread it back under and make a knot like that with it. I don't remember what that kind of stitch is called. So anyway, you're going to sew that up. At some point, I'm going to need more yarn. Okay, but go ahead. Oh, uh, and right about, well, you can kind of judge it for yourself. Right about here is where you have to leave the opening for the thumb. So remember to leave that opening for the thumb. Let me pull this out. 
then I'll show you. Okay, well, if you want, if you want an actual mitt, leave the opening for the thumb. Uh, if you want a wrister, just with the wrist, then you don't have to worry about that. And you kind of have to play around with it to figure out how long it is you want your opening to be. I'm trying to find this stitch in here. There it is. I just kind of put mine on, play it around with it till I got what I wanted from it. And then that's where I determined where my thumb was going to go at. So let's see. My hand in, my pattern is up here, then I would make my thumb slit about there. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start at, right here. See what a yarn. I had a piece of yarn already. Oh, here it is. Sorry about that. Go ahead and thread this through. Don't forget to either um, leave a little tail at the end of the yarn so that you can tuck it in, or you can go ahead and knot it. Right here, weave the ends in later. Okay, before you start really getting into sewing, check it out. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, and then just go ahead, make your loops. You can go down as far as you want. Making sure I'm matching my ends. Oops, sorry about that. Now, once you get the hang of this, this is, these are going to be some really nice um, items that you can knit up for crafts, fairs, for Christmas gifts. Okay, here I am down at the end. Let me get my end really good. I'm going to come back up. And I like to finish off my ends. You can tie it in a knot. Uh, you can weave it through. I like to pull it through and then uh, clip off my ends. I'm going to turn this inside out. Okay, there's the mitt. Okay, nice and simple. As always, if you have any questions, um, you can always uh, respond to the video or send me a message. Thanks a lot.